Hi everyone, and welcome back to the BREM Method YouTube channel. This video is on membrane fluidity, and specifically the structural and environmental components that can affect membrane fluidity, and how that will be tested on the MCAT. So let's get started. Okay, so here is a typical question on membrane fluidity and structure that you could see on the MCAT. Which combination of lipid type and temperature results in the most disordered membrane? lipids with saturated acyl chains at either low or high temperatures, or lipids with unsaturated acyl chains at either low or high temperatures. So we're going to work through this piece by piece to talk through some of the content around this type of question and how you can put those pieces together for any question like this on the MCAT. All right, so let's start off with the fact that the question stem calls out the two important features for membrane fluidity the type of lipids that show up in the membrane, and the temperature that the membrane is in. Let's start with temperature first. Generally speaking, whenever we increase temperature, we're increasing disorder. That's a simple way you can remember it. So right off the bat for this question, we could eliminate low temperatures. So that's straightforward enough. So now let's talk about the other part of this question, which is the structural components of membranes. Now there's three types of fats that are very important for membrane composition that you need to know. There, they are both saturated and unsaturated fats and cholesterol. And I've had I've and I've thrown up the structures here. So take a moment, pause this video if you need to, and determine the differences between these three structures and try to predict which of these has the most rigidity and which has the most fluidity when in the membrane. Pause the video, give yourself a chance to try it out on your own, and then we'll talk through it. Okay, so if you check out the saturated fat versus unsaturated, they're both long chains of hydrocarbons, but the saturated is nice and regular, right? C, H, H, C, H, H. Nice straight lines, nice and clean. So you can imagine that if these guys were all packed together, say in a lipid membrane, they would all pack really nice and neatly because they have these nice straight chains. Now when things are packed tightly and neatly, they're less likely to move or be disordered, right? So this is going to be a fairly rigid membrane. All right, so they either use rigidity or order, right? Both of those are describing the same thing. So saturated fats have high rigidity, high order, right? Saturated, sat fat. High rigidity, high order. Contrast that with unsaturated fat, right? So far it looks pretty good for these first five cards, but then wham, we have this double bond which produces what we like to call a kink. So I'm just gonna add on to our little chain here. We have saturated, saturated, all nice and neat, and then we have this guy that's got whoop, a little kink, right? And so that kink is gonna push the next fatty acid over a little bit, next phospholipid. It's gonna create a little bit more space and more fluidity. So the key thing to remember here is when you have unsaturated fats, you have increased fluidity or disorder. And that's true even in a compounding way. So the more unsaturated fats we have in a membrane, the more fluidity or disorder we would have. So keep that in mind that the more unsaturated fats we put into a membrane, the more disordered or fluidity that we get. Now let's take a look at cholesterol. So cholesterol doesn't look anything like these two chains. And in fact, it's got these four ring structures and then it's got this little chain here. But if we're taking a look, it's usually a little bit smaller than our fatty acids. And it's definitely not this nice straight line, right? So it's kind of like, I'll just draw circles. It creates a little bump in our lipid membrane. Oftentimes, cholesterol is a part of lipid rafts, right? Which are these kind of rafts that float through the more regular lipid membrane. But it absolutely increases fluidity. So cholesterol, too, also increases fluidity, right? The more cholesterol we have in our lipid membranes, the more fluid our lipid membranes are. 
So going back to our question stem, right, what we know is we are looking for most disordered or most fluid and based on our notes here that would either be most unsaturated fats or most cholesterol they don't talk about cholesterol with this set of answer choices so we're going to focus on unsaturated acyl chains which would be the answer d right saturated as we talked about would increase order so if they had said what is the most ordered membrane it would be the opposite of d which is the most saturated at low temperatures okay so is it better to have a rigid membrane or a fluid membrane? Well, it depends. So one of the other ways that this can be tested is with animals in different environments. So let's talk first about our friend, the polar bear. <laughs> this is our polar bear. And our polar bear is in very cold environments. So think, low temperature. What does low temperature do to our lipid membranes? Yeah, it increases the rigidity of our lipid membranes. Now, as with anything else in our body, there's an optimal fluidity and rigidity to our membranes, right? We don't want them too rigid and we don't want them too fluid. There's this optimal middle ground. So for polar bears, they're in an environment that's gonna make their cell membranes a little too rigid, right? Too stiff and cold is the way I like to think about it. So how can we adjust the structural components of the polar bear's lipid membrane to compensate for that decreased temperature? Pause the video and think through that for a second. All right, so hopefully you're thinking, all right, well, I need to do something with the structure to make this, to make the polar bear's membranes more fluid. And as we know, the things that increase fluidity are our unsaturated fats and our cholesterol. So we can expect that a polar bear has membranes that have increased concentrations of unsaturated fats and cholesterol relative to saturated. So relatively more unsaturated fats and cholesterols compared to our saturated fats. Okay, so, so far so good. We have our polar bear. Now let's pick another animal. A rainforest tree frog. What kind of temperature is the rainforest tree frog in? Yeah, it's gonna be a higher temperature, right? So increased temperature. So similar but opposite situation, right? This is actually gonna increase this animal's membrane fluidity a little too much, right? It's a very, very warm environment in the tropical rainforest. So what can we do structurally in the tree frog's membranes to compensate for that increased fluidity? Yeah, hopefully you've got the drill now. We're going to increase our concentration of saturated fats. Saturated fats, because that increases the rigidity compared to this unsaturated and cholesterol levels. So, if you took a cell from a polar bear and you took a cell from a tree frog, the polar bear would have much higher concentrations of unsaturated fats and our cholesterol, and our tree frog would have much higher concentrations of saturated fats. You can imagine how they could test you with any kind of animal as long as they let you know what the environment is like, right? So higher temperatures, more saturated fats to compensate, lower temperatures, more unsaturated fats and cholesterol. Thank you so much for joining me guys. I hope you learned a little something about the functional aspects of membrane fluidity in eukaryotes and how they can be tested on the MCAT. For more resources, make sure to check out the links below and the rest of the videos in this bio biochemistry playlist. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.